long division. You learn that flash in algebra 2. And long division with polynomials is pretty much the same as long division that you did in third and fourth grade. The only difference is there's the x's in there. Um, synthetic division, we learned that also, and we're going to go over that today as well. Most people like synthetic division better, but there are times that long division um, works out. Sometimes it forces you to use long division. Um, and so I want to kind of go over the idea of this first, and then we'll do the synthetic division. I think part of your homework is broken up into use some long division, use some synthetic division. So remember, if we're going to long divide this, this goes on the outside. So I'm going to do 3x minus 2. And I'm going to divide this on the inside. 6x cubed minus 16x squared plus 17x minus 6. And just like you did back, did back in third grade, if I was going to long divide um, 3 into 217, I start by saying, well, 3 doesn't go into 2. So how many times does 3 go into 21? And I know there's 7. I'm going to do the same thing here, except for this x is here. And I say, what can I multiply 3x by to get 6x cubed? 2x squared. And I multiply it up there just like we do with regular long division. And then just like up here, you take this times this, and you write it under here, and you subtract. You're going to do the same thing uh, with polynomial long division. You've just got to remember that you're multiplying by this whole thing. So the 3x minus 2 times 2x squared. So 2x squared times 3x is my 6x cubed. And 2x squared times negative 2 is negative 4x squared. It should always line up that you have your left terms together. And then just like we did up here with uh, normal long division, you're going to draw the line, and you're going to subtract everything. And this is the biggest mistake that people make on this, is they forget to subtract everything. I like to put my negative sign all the way through. So I'm going to subtract this, and when I subtract a negative 4x, that's going to turn it to a positive. So you don't have to do it that way, but you've got to remember that you're subtracting all of that. This should always go to 0. Negative 16x squared plus 4x squared would give me negative 12x squared. Yes? You have kind of maybe even made the book. And then just like long division, we subtract this, we get zero. We bring down the next number and start it again. We do the same thing with this. we got to bring down the next number. And you repeat the process until you don't have any more numbers to bring down, right? So I'm going to ask myself, what do I multiply 3x by to get negative 12x squared? 4x. Now I take that and I multiply by this. Subtract. See what we get. See if we all agree before I do it for you. So I do 4x plus 3x. And so 12x squared. Negative 4x times negative 2 is positive 8x. And then again, remember that you're subtracting. So for me, subtracting means changing all the signs. So subtracting means this would change to a positive and this would change to a negative. So this cancels out and I'm left with 9x. Everyone agree with me on that? Bring down the last number and repeat the same process. What do I multiply 3x by to get 9x? Just plus 3. So 3 times 3x minus 2 gives me 9x minus 6. Which means when I subtract, it works out really nice. That means I have a remainder of 0. Um, if you look your answers up in the back of the book today, some of them they're going to say they're going to write the answer as the product of the two factors. I'm totally okay if you just kind of leave it like this. If you divide it, this is what you get. But what you're doing when you do division, whatever you get here, let's see, 3 goes to 7, that didn't work out so well. I can make that a 9. And 
then so then I would say three. When you get a remainder of zero, you could say that three times seventy-three would equal two hundred and nineteen. Do you agree that's kind of what the definition of division is? So we could say that on here. We could say that three x minus two times two x squared minus four x plus three would be well, I would multiply together to get this final answer. Um, so if you look your answers up in the back of the book tonight, you might see it written like this. I'm okay if you just write the answer, but I'm just letting you know that if you look in the back of the book, they're going to include that in the class sometimes. Okay? Let's look at another one. So now I'm going to all be so nice, so let's look at one that's not perfect. Yeah, this is perfect. Okay. Okay. Let's look at this one. Okay. 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 This is an example of one that we would have to do long division. Synthetic division works out really nice if you're dividing by a binomial. Um, this is a trinomial divided by a trinomial, and this would be an example that the only thing you could do is long division. What is not okay to do is cross out those x's in the top and the bottom. By addition, subtraction, you can't break up. But what we can do is, is do some long division here. Which one of those goes on the outside of your division problem, the top or the bottom? The bottom. So I could put x squared minus 2x plus 3. What is the top here? Do you notice anything about the, the top here before we write it in here? x to the 4 plus 3x squared plus 1. It skips exponents. And when you're doing division, whether you're doing long division or synthetic division, it's really important that you don't skip zeros. Um, you have to write it in descending order. But you gotta fill in your zeros here. And so when I write this, I'm gonna write x to the fourth plus zero x to the third plus three x squared. Six again plus zero x plus one. If you don't fill your zeros in in long division, your exponents won't line up. In synthetic division, you're just going to get the wrong answer if you don't fill your zeros in. So uh, it's really important that we remember to do that. And then this is going to be just like the last one. So I'm going to get you started on the first step if you need it, but then I want to give you a minute to see if, make sure we have long division down before we move on. The first step, what do you multiply x squared by to get x to the fourth? x squared. And it kind of looks like a really big problem, but it's not so bad. Because we're going to take this times this whole thing, so it's going to fill in three of these already, right? So we're going to get x to the fourth minus 2x to the third plus 3x squared. And then you're going to subtract that, see what you get left, bring down your next term, and let's see, uh, I'll give you a minute to kind of go through that. Remember to subtract.
you've done here, you know, I want to kind of check and see whether you have the same set. Um, if not, my first thing is to go back and check your negatives when you're subtracting, because that's the, the place where I usually see a, a missing uh, negative sign. But I'm on the last step here, so I'm going to say multiply by x squared is equal to 4x squared. That's going to give us 4. So this is 4x squared minus 8x equals 12. Remember, I'm subtracting, so that's going to change. So I'm going to get 2x minus 11. No, did I do something wrong here? Did you get that? Um, there's nothing else to bring down, which means this is my remainder. Remember back in elementary school, you would use a little R, but a remainder is really like a fractional part left over. So uh, if you have a remainder of one and you're dividing by three, then you would have a remainder of like one third at the end. So whatever your remainder is, you remember that you take it and you put it over what you divided by. So I add it to the end. I would say 2x minus 11 over x squared minus 2x plus 3. Because it's like a fractional part left over. If there's a remainder, that means it's not a factor. And that's kind of the, the factor theorem that we're going to get to. Um, questions on this? There's definitely a lot of room for error. There's a lot of room for negative mistakes. Um, I make negative mistakes sometimes. So show your work so that I can go through and I can kind of see what happened. That you had the right process. Maybe you just forgot a negative sign. Probably you remember synthetic division, maybe, or maybe the idea of it, but it's much less work, but you got to remember the rules for synthetic division. I'm definitely a fan of synthetic division if I can use it. Synthetic means fake, so it's kind of like fake division. They've just figured out how we can do it with the least amount of work. Get a one at the end. 
And then I usually put a little box around the end here, because what's the last number represent? The remainder. Which means we can write this. We definitely don't leave this as our answer. This is kind of just a shortcut in between steps. you got to write your answer back as a polynomial. Um, and remember, every time you divide, you're losing an exponent. So if this started with x to the fourth, we're going to start this with x to the third. And I just want to throw this. This is going to be 1x to the third minus 3x squared minus 1x plus 1. It always counts down one by one. That's why you fill the zeros in. Plus my remainder, which is 1 over what I divided by, which is x plus 3. Remember what IFF means, you might want to write if and only if. A polynomial will have a factor of x minus k if and only if I plug k into that problem, what do I get as my answer? Which is another way of saying if the remainder is zero, it is a factor. Some problems on your homework today are just going to say, um, find the remainder, or is it a factor? Which means all you got to do is plug in whatever that value is, and if you get zero, then that means it's a factor. So I think you're uh, final, do they all be final here? I think so. So if it's like x minus 3, you wouldn't tell us to do x to plug k into that minus 3. You tell me, if it's written as x minus k, and it was x minus 3, what would k be? 3. So you're like plugging in what the zero is. Always opposite, just like in comparison. Let's see if we can get a couple of here. It says, use the remainder theorem to find the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus k. Sure. It is. So when it says use the remainder theorem, that means they don't even want you to do division here. You could, 
but using the remainder theorem would be a lot faster because the remainder theorem says all we have to do to find the remainder is plug k into that problem and whatever we get would be our remainder. So on this one, I wrote out how the book did. They give you the function 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. They told them, they tell you what k is. On this one, since they say k equals 2, do I take the opposite of 2 there? No, it's not written as a factor. They're telling me k equals 2. So all I have to do to find the remainder is plug 2 into that problem. And whatever I get would be that remainder. minus 2, I would have the remainder of 3. Does that mean that this is a uh, factor of that or a solution to that problem? No, because it does equal 0. Does that kind of make sense? Not so bad, right? Yeah, not so bad. I'm going to go to the same way. The other way of asking that same question, instead of saying use the remainder to find the remainder of it, it could actually give you a factor and say, is x plus 3 a factor of this problem? And this one, they don't tell you which way to do it, so you have two options. You could actually divide instead of division, but you could also tell if it's a factor by using the remainder theorem, right? So one option here is I could actually do division. I could divide by negative 3. Why am I doing negative 3? You have to take the opposite of the factor. And I could divide that out. 3, 4, negative 18, negative 3. And what am I looking for if it's a factor? What's the, what would be the other option to do if I had the remainder here? Yeah, the other option would be actually do f of negative 3. Um, I'm with Logan. I kind of prefer synthetic division because I can do this arithmetic very quickly. Plugging negative 3 and all the exponents, yes, I have a calculator, I can do it. Um, but either way, I don't really care whatever you want to do. But I'm just going to do this one just because I already written out. So I'm bring that down to negative 9, negative 5, 16, and negative 18 is negative 3, and 9. If I plug that in, I would also get 6, so it's whichever way you want. Is it a factor? No, because it has to equal 0 to be a factor. Pretty much it, yeah. For other examples in your book, if you want more examples of the long division, synthetic division, go back and look in your book. Because this is just day one, so we're going to add on to this tomorrow. But today you should be able to do 3 through 30 multiples of 3 and 60. Again, the directions kind of talk about writing a summary term, su uh, a summary of the division and writing uh, in fraction form and blah, blah, blah. Write it the way we wrote it in our notes, um, how we wrote those answers to the division problems. Don't stress too much about the way the book talks about it, uh, but you're welcome to go back and look at the way the book writes.